Hi everyone, today we're going to be doing a brake job on Jake's car. Actually, come here. Say hi Jake. Hi. <laughs> cool stuff. So we're going to be rebuilding every single one of his calipers, including new pistons. We've got a Dave Fab brake stopper and we have a Motomec bias valve. We're fitting Rodison's pads to it. It's already had a set of hell brake lines. We did those the other day, but unfortunately Jake, brought, Jake bought the wrong piston kit for his calipers. So unfortunately that didn't fit. So that's given us the opportunity actually today to film the entire job. So just gone and got some factory R from upstairs. Pretty good stuff, we like it. Uh, so we have done a video recently of how to rebuild your brake calipers. I'm not gonna go into quite as much detail this time. We're just gonna try and smash through it as quickly as possible to make sure that we get the entire job done today because we're doing it after hours at work. After we've finished packing all your guys' stuff, we're now working on our own cars. So take the square cut seal. There you go, so pop that in there. That is one seriously sharp hit. Woohoo! Jake has opted for brand new pistons because the pistons that were on his calipers were absolutely shot. They were in a pretty poor condition, to be honest. One of them was an extreme struggle to pull off. Uh, we did get there in the end, but it was a bit of a fight. Okay, so both front caliper seals it in. Uh, it was a bit of a struggle this time around. They were not best pleased to be going in, but uh, we, were ma we made sure that we weren't being too ham-fisted and stopped when there was too much resistance so we didn't break any of the seals doing it. But they're both done now, so it's time to move on to the rear calipers. So we have just finished rebuilding all four calipers. It is now quite a little bit later. Every single one seemed to fight us. Uh, there were seals popping out, they were getting caught up. Uh, we were then fighting with the circlips in here because they're, because they're smaller than the brakes, my brakes, because uh, I've got sport brakes and these are regular 1.8 brakes. It's so much harder to get picks in there. We've got these short little picks, which are just an absolute pain in the ass. To be honest, I would, if I was going to do it again, I'd really want to find a, the proper set of circlip pliers to make life easier there. Uh, we'll start throwing these on the car now so that we can then fit the bias valve, brake stopper, and take it out, do some hard stops, get them bedded in and give Jake the best brakes he has ever had. Let's go! So the brakes are now all done. All four corners have been installed with the kind help of James. Let's now fit this bias valve. So the bias valve is here next to the master cylinder and we've already drained all the brakes because we were doing the brake job. Uh, it's super simple just to remove the existing proportioning valve. So there's our original proportioning valve. <laughs> so now what we need to do is take our, our union which joins our front brakes together and it goes in the front pipe here. So then taking a 14 and a 10, we are just gonna tighten these up. Cool, so that's the front union all done. We're just gonna pull that out of the way about there really. Perfect. Whilst we're in here, we're also going to put in a brake stopper. Now that we've undone both bolts on the master cylinder, we're going to remove the bracket, for which I need a set of pliers. Here are my pliers. So with that clip undone. Missed. We can then 
install the brake stopper. So the brake stopper goes over the top of the master cylinder and replaces the original bracket. And then there is a little bolt hole on the strut tower, which creates a physical connection and prevents firewall flex. So let's just install this. This is the tricky bit because of the way that Dave have designed it. It is very strong, but it is also pretty tough to install. So I'm going to put my uh, nut in my extension, ready to go. Hopefully I don't drop it. Nice, we've got that started. And I'll repeat it for the other side. Bugger. Oh no. Oh no. Where's it gone? Here we go. It is now, yeah. So after we removed the uh, proportioning valve, we installed the Dayfab brake stopper, which was made a enjoyable experience by the fact that Jake has a strut brace right in the way that appears to have never been removed, so it is incredibly difficult. Now, moving back to installing the bias valve, and uh, these bias valves are all the same, whether you get one from Hell or Motomec. They all come out of the same factory. Uh, we have found though that you've really got to use PTFE tape, unfortunately. Um, places like Fly Miata say that you shouldn't. However, they do not seem to seal without a liberal use of PTFE tape. So all we do is put some PTFE tape on it and then tighten it, tighten it up until it feels like it's going to break and then stop tightening it up. <laughs> so now that we have installed the uh, 1.8 BSP to M10 by 1 fittings that we uh, have had specially made to work with this, it's now time to install it in its final home. So when we do install it, in is at the top and out is at the bottom. So the whole reason that we have installed a brake bias valve on Jake's car is because the fronts lock up really easy. So the early cars have a proportioning valve which really favors the front brakes. And depending on the quality of the tire that you've got, the road conditions uh, and the brake pads that you have, it can be super easy to lock the fronts. So for example, on a track day with AR1s, which are super sticky, a standard bias valve is probably slightly too forward biased. However, on a wet road with road tires, the standard bias is uh, can be pretty dangerous actually. Um, can be pretty sketchy, very easy to lock those front brakes. So what we're doing for Jake is we've installed this bias valve and then if we wind it so it's 100% at the rear, that means that it's going to send all of the available bias that the that the master cylinder has to the back, but that does not mean that the back will get 100% of the bias. So it will mean that we're able to balance those brakes much better. So the front will still, will get 100% of what it can, the rear will get 100% of what it can. And then we can then work it back if we need to. Um, Jake says that at the minute that it locks up pretty easy. So we'll probably start with it all the way at the back. And generally what we would do is we would start off with a bit more front bias, because when you brake too hard with lots and lots of rear bias, it tends to want to make the car uh, rotate, which is uh, really dangerous, especially if we're on a corner and you're not expecting it. Um, but we're now all buttoned up and ready to start bleeding these brakes. So it's been a long old slog, but let's go and get it bled and then get these brakes bedded in. So now that uh, we finished bleeding the brakes, uh, that was a couple of days ago, I would come out to try Jake's car out. He tells me that it is braking much better, but that it is 
locking up the rears now. So we did set the bias really far towards the rear, didn't we? Yeah, wound it all the way in. Um, and with the intention of being able to wind it back out. But uh, tell everybody what your brakes were like before we undertook that exercise. <laughs> before they were pretty, they were pretty interesting. Um, if you were to brake and it would ever lock up, it would only be the passenger side, which if you were mid corner would make things uh, somewhat interesting. And you had to leave a lot of braking distance, particularly in the wet. I've been caught out a few times going around corners, um, but now now they're much better. It does lock up. Yeah, the rears a little bit much, but you can play with the bias valve on that one. Um, yeah. But now I don't. Yeah, I can. I can leave like probably 20% of the thinking distance that I did before, yeah. the braking distance, sorry. And how does it feel? It feels so much better. Before they were like, it was very weak and it was very spongy. It, it was not a nice thing to press. And now it is, uh, it is much harder. But you, let's, uh, let's, let's go for a drive. Uh, this is my first time driving, driving the handbrake doesn't work, Cameron. Oh, handbrake work. doesn't work, so. Something we need to fix <laughs> is the handbrake. <laughs> I haven't driven an NA car in ages. Oh. Power. I just need an exhaust. I love that. I love that honk from the intake. So, so we've decided to come out for a drive because it is raining outside, and standing outside and talking about the car is not ideal, really. It's actually starting to rain even worse than it was when we first started doing the video, but. It's probably actually going to be a really good test for, for the brakes today. So how, how long have you had this car, Jake? I've had it for about a year and a half now. Yeah. Um, the brakes have always been somewhat questionable. Um, I may have made them worse. I, the first thing I ever did to this car was change the front discs and pads. I didn't really know what I was doing then. Did I? So, so let's try out the brakes. Oh, it is the rears. It definitely is, is the rears. I'm Let's put the anchors on again, and then let's go adjust the bias valve. Oh, well, that was the front that time. Was it? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Try again? Yeah. So this, coming back will be good. Big straight. Yeah, that's your fronts. Interesting. Maybe, maybe now that it's got hot. Maybe, yeah, that's true. Oh, it's, 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 it's not bad, it's, it's pretty good though, isn't it? No, yeah, braking, especially, it's like the road is covered in water at the moment. Yeah, it is. It is. It throws you forward. <laughs> that was a rears. It's, so you, your front's braking, but also the rear's got a bit of axle tramp. I think that's what's happening there. Oh, uh, okay. So rather than necessarily being your, your rears that are locking up, um, to be honest, what I think's happening is your diff mounts are shagged. My diff mounts probably are shagged. Fine. We do it again. Yeah, definitely the fronts. Yeah. So, and then it was just, just that little bit of axle tramp before. Yeah, that, yeah Jesus. definitely yeah, axle tramp yeah. in the back there. So, Poly bushes, on it? <laughs> yeah, some solid bushes in the yeah. back. So yeah, much more confidence inspiring. Especially when you come to corners. Um, my commute to work is all back roads, so I can, uh, I can brake a little much later than I thought I would. Good. Especially before. Yeah, I can brake much harder and later now than I could before. Before, you'd have to leave loads of times, and even if you did get on it hard, one of the wheels would lock up and they would just be a bit naff in general. It is, they actually, they're really positive now. They feel really good. I wouldn't have said that there's anything wrong with them. Um, Especially when they get heated up. I mean, you've got just NS20s on, so not you've not got good tires no, on it, I'm sorry to say. The cheapest Nankak tires that you can buy. You know, and so that's not going to be helping. Obviously today it's wet as well, which is why it's going to really be having a, having a job. But it, so you've had you've had, airport. you've had the full work. So we did we did uh, so we did your we did a full set of hell brake lines, didn't we? Oh yeah, there was great brake lines, broader sucks pads all round. Uh, well, was day fab brake stopper. Yeah, that's that anchors the uh, anchors the master cylinder to the body of the car. Yeah, it stops that firewall flex. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've inserted a clip of before in the video, yeah, yeah. and uh, then the bias valve. So uh, I actually think now, and my recommendations now would be in the future, but you're going to need some either void fillers or yeah, probably right. void fillers would be the simplest solution for now to yeah, get some yeah. better brakes. Uh, I do awesome. have a set somewhere, so if Ooh. I can dig them out for you, I'll give them to you. Awesome. Uh, and 
Well, in the dry, when I first did it, I mean, my tires are fresh from anyway, but when we first did it, it was completely dry and warm out. Yeah. Um, so when you did hit it, when I was uh, bedding the brakes and you uh, you really did stop. We might get, be able to get some uh, more rear, bi more bias in it as well, towards the rear. More bias, it, oh, okay. Well, well you're st it's still locking the front, so that noise you've been hearing, as we said, that's, uh, that's okay, that's interesting. So I think we get, hopefully, we'll be able to get some more rear bias in it if you had the better tires. So. What are your plans now with the car? Talking about tyres. Uh, next next mod is wheels and tyres. I'm probably going uh, 205 NS2Rs. Yeah, good uh, choice. Big, big, yeah. big semi-slicks. And some ultralight wheels, probably. Yeah, good choice. I think the NS2Rs would be they're ideal, really. They're a really good uh, road tyre, really nice track tyre. So be much better than what you're running now. Yeah. I did have a look. The NS2Rs have a, a better wet rating than the, than the road tyres that I'm wearing at the moment. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's <laughs> like extraordinary. Like two levels or something like Goodness that. Goodness me. Yeah, I know. So it's well worth changing yeah, to the NS2Rs. Yeah, definitely will be. So thanks for letting me drive your car today, Jake. No and worries. Yeah, thanks for letting us uh, work on your car as well. No I think it's a free labour. <laughs> that is one way of looking that at it. <laughs> You know, to have you, have you safe on the tr on the on the road in your journey is to work yeah. is really important, yeah. and so that you can come out and do track days with us. That is also true. I'm excited. If any of you want any of the parts that we featured in this video, they are all available on our website. On that note, give us a like if you have enjoyed this video. Subscribe to us for more Mazda MX-5 content every single week. Visit our website, BuffyRacing.co.uk, and we will see you next time.